has taken over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. All right, Carver High, hour three here, and uh, I watched Holmgren play last night for the Thunder, and I got to tell you, watching this guy, and Coach Young said it best, uh, catch and shoot uh, at seven foot, and when he gets in the air, I mean, this guy is really unblockable. It's a lot like, he's right, uh, Durant, but in my view, uh, even more so, and then the fact is, um, you know, I never saw Durant really try unless it was, you know, deep in the playoffs where he would actually play defense ever in a game because he's just one way. In my view, it's that simple. I don't think the guy plays defense at all. People can say whatever they want. He just doesn't. He doesn't ball on both ends. The guy just scores. That's it. This guy, Holmgren, he actually – he takes a massive amount of pride in blocking shots. This guy's three and a half blocks a game. He had two blocks last night. He is all over protecting that rim. I love a guy that like his goal every night when he goes out is to block shots and make stops on the defensive end. Look, uh, I think that this has been very good for Chet, uh, this little start that he's had in the summer league. I think it's great for him. It's great for the Thunder. It's great for all of it. I'm, I still want to see him when we get to the real deal and he goes up against the bigger bodies, the veterans that have been around for a long time, I think that's where we'll maybe get a little bit more of a separation and see where Holmgren's at. But this is cool what he's doing in Summer League. Uh, He's playing the part so far for him and Giddy. Him and Giddy already got a little connection going out there in Vegas. Yeah, and he's he's definitely got an issue with his weight. I mean, uh, he's going to get pushed around in a low block by by vets that have all that knowledge and experience and all the little tricks and games in their bag of how to deal with the low block. I don't think he's that guy. Uh, I agree with Young that he's, um, you know, more of a four and a weak side defender. Um, I I said it best when we were playing, uh, when I play uh, like pickup or whatever uh, on Saturdays and Sundays, I'm always uh, the weak side defender on the best defender of the best player of the other team. So we got a big on a big, and then he gets around the defender. I'm the weak side defender. I'm the weak side shot blocker. I'm the weak side rebounder. And I think that, Mike, that's his role. He will never be the five. He's too skinny. He's too fragile in his weight to be able to bang with a guy that's 300 pounds. I mean, the guy's a buck 75 soaking wet. But I am telling you, when you can jump 12 feet in the air with your arms swinging at everything like a fly swatter, my man is going to block more shots on the weak side help than anyone maybe we've seen in the NBA in a long time. Quentin Grimes continues to play well for the Knicks at Summer League. He had 24, but they lost to Portland, 88-77. Matt Ryan hit an acrobatic last-second three to give the Celtics a crazy 111-109 win over the Bucks last night at Summer League as well. Tonight, uh, here is what we have, Scotty. In fact, they are just tipping off the Bulls and the Raptors to start the day out in Vegas. That is just underway. We have the Grizzlies and the Nets coming up uh, at 6.30 East, the Hawks and the Heat the Pistons, and the Pacers at 9 o'clock East. Then I'll give you the rest. Here's the first four. Well, look, uh, the thing I want to see is, uh, frankly, the guy that has stood out to me on the Nets. Now, I don't want to talk anymore about Durant and Kyrie Irving. I'm sick and tired of it. But I am not sick and tired of watching Cam Thomas play. This guy can flat-out score, and he has been going off in Las Vegas. So watch this guy play tonight against Memphis. And you'll see some bucket making of the highest order. And anytime I get to see that Pistons team, and hopefully yeah. Ivy's in the lineup and okay, and Coach was saying he's all banged up, but I, I didn't know that. We'll see how that goes. I like watching that Detroit team. And I got to tell you, the Pacers, I watched them. Uh, Matt Thurman looks great for the Pacers in summer league play. The kid out of Arizona who I wanted the Knicks to get their hands on. 
Matt Theron looks really good for Indy. Uh, late night, 9 Eastern Celtics Warriors, Lakers and Clippers at 11 East, along with the Suns and the Mavericks, also 11 East, as they are, of course, the Thomas and Mack and the Cox Pavilion tonight, both venues out in Vegas. Well, first of all, I want to say we welcome our radio affiliate, Sirius XM, Sports Map, Sports Byline, to Coast to Coast on a Tuesday. Second of all, uh, I'm bored hearing about the Boston Celtics and Warriors. Didn't we just go through that crappy final? And let me tell you something. Yes. You can talk all you want about Malcolm Brogdon or Matt Ryan. Like when I heard Matt Ryan hit a game winner last night, I was like, I didn't know he was playing basketball too. I don't even know who that kid is. I'm sick of talking about the Celtics, okay? Thanks a lot. I don't care what the F they do in the summer league. I want to watch all the other teams. I'm sick and tired of hearing about them. Nice job in the finals. Swing and a miss. John Wall is glad that he doesn't have to be Batman anymore as he joins the Clippers. Maybe tomorrow I will play that for you. I know. NBA play-in tournament will be permanent going forward. Zach Levine says his only meeting was with the Bulls, says Chicago is his home. That's also the only place that could give him over $200 million, Scotty, so that's why it would be yeah. his home as well. He said it would be disrespectful <laughs> to talk to other teams, and what it is is stupid. Yeah. Uh, always talk uh, <laughs> to everyone to find out where the most money is. <laughs> exactly. We will come back. The Open Championship Tiger Talk today, Scotty. And where's Rick Haro? It's Tuesday. Where's Haro? Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. People are going to the betting window betting and betting them the now rim. before the trade takes place. How Diamond dare they bets. do what's fiscally responsible? See how it plays out. Buffalo's going all in right Football now. Football full to circle. All their chips in the middle of the table. It's do or die for And them. God being out. They, they've had a little bit of a shakeup. In-game live all access. You could take the points. You can take the money line, and we have to go to San Jose too. Maybe a small player. I'm gonna go both underdogs here. I don't want to hear it anymore. Wow! In game live, prime time. He plays time. like he did in game five. They are gonna be all good in game six at home. Oh boy, you want to give the eight and a half points with a desperate team facing a little Get the winning edge only on Sports Grid, your 24/7 sports wagering network. You might be the next Daily Fantasy Millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. The morning after. The Brew Crew now have lost four of their last five games, so they can't pull away despite the minus 240 price they're booked with in the NL Central. This is like the bizarro world of the AL East, right, where everybody seems to be really good, including the Baltimore Orioles. And then you take a look at the Brewers and the Cardinals gone. We get no pushback from anybody behind us with the Pirates, Cubs, or Reds. So, yeah, sure, we'll go 5-5 five and five over 10, and we'll hang around in this divisional race until August and through yep. September. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. All right, now let's go to the outfield, and we'll start off with Mike Trout, who looked like he was on his way to a fantasy MVP season, but my gosh, he's in the worst slump of his career right now, George, over the last month. John Carlos Stanton will start. He, of course, plays for the Yankees. Aaron Judge, no question. And then Shohei Otani, and that's really who everyone will want to see play on Tuesday night. Yeah, but Otani was voted in as a pitcher and the DH, right? The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. I got roasted on Twitter because I said they're locked to go over six and a half wins. Folks, the missing piece, if you really study the Panthers and you, and you learn what they're looking at there, they were a dreadful quarterback last season. Matt Rule's personnel control made a decision. He was going to have someone to compete for that starting job, and it's going to be Mayfield. Mayfield will one up winning that job. He, he's got to win it. They need him to win it. He's going to give him some stability. The Sports Grid Network.
So uh, they're at it again, BetMGM, with another concept that people are absorbing uh, and rapidly. It's uh, they just give out two hundred dollars to people, like when the wind blows. How about this? Bet ten dollars on the Open Championship and win two hundred dollars if any player makes a birdie. That'll take all of about two minutes. Uh, use the promo code PGAOC. 2022 that's pga oc 2022 and get your hands on 200 bucks all you do is bet 10 bucks on the open championship and you're golden there you go Uh, and hopefully the birdies will be getting made by guys that we are going to have tickets on can't wait for the sheet of integrity tomorrow on coast to coast uh, as we head into the first round of the Open Championship very, very early on the East Coast Thursday morning. Speaking of the Open, Scotty, normally uh, it is Tuesday. It is the third hour of Coast to Coast. Where in the world is Rick Harrow? I mean, this is his spot. Supposed to be on right now. Look who he blew us off for today. I mean, honestly, the nerve of this guy. He's over there. Look at him. Jack Uh, Nicholas, uh, Gary Player. I mean, sure, uh, why not? Why hang with Pharrell and Carver? Why? I'm going to go hang with Jack Nicholas and Gary Player. Must be nice, Scotty, uh, for Rick Harrow. Yeah. Yeah. Rough life for this guy going to the Open Championship and then doing his live shots on crappy Scottish Wi Fi, breaking up like a car crash. What a disaster. Well, he claims that he has secured himself Uh a very good internet spot for Thursday after the first round at St. Andrews, uh, and he allegedly is going to join us. From a wind tunnel. (laughs) Well, when he comes on, it's going to be 10 o'clock at night there, so I'm assuming he will be indoors somewhere uh, after the first round of the Open Championship. So there you go uh, with Rick today. Briefs. He's going to be wearing a <laughs> men's briefs like boxers, old man boxers with his black socks oh, walking across I, the hotel uh, room floor. And you imagine I, ordering room I, service. Have you ever seen him eat? He's got food all over him. I love it. I though. did not need like uh, that image. That's for sure. Tiger to the podium this morning, Scotty, at the Open. And he has not publicly made any comments about the Live Golf. Now, we'll save all the warm and fuzzy stuff about St. Andrews for tomorrow when we do our big preview. But today, we'll hear Tiger taking his turn uh, at bashing the Live Golfers. Here we go. These players are doing for, you know, guaranteed money. Um, what, what is the incentive to practice? What is the incentive to go out there and earn it in the dirt? Um, in the dirt? You're just getting paid a lot of money up front and playing a few events and playing 54 holes. They're trying to, you know, playing blaring music and have all these um Ah, uh, you can't play the different. music I, I, on I the course. Can't play the music. How, you know, have... 54 holes, I mean, I, I can understand 54 holes is almost like a mandate when you get to the senior tour. The guy's a little bit older and a little more banged up. But, you know, when you're <laughs> at a young age and some of these kids, they really are kids, you know, who have gone from amateur golf in, into that organization. Um, 72 hole tests, you know, are, are part of it. I mean, we used to have 36 hole playoffs for major championships. Uh, back you know, in my day. That's how it used to be. Um, <laughs> 18 hole U.S. Open playoffs. You know, that's, he is getting old. He's doing the uh, back in my day. I just don't see how that, that move is, is positive in the, in the long term. That just did not go well for live golfers. Like that guy's no. diatribe about the live tour just did not do them any favors. I, I will say this uh, I think the treatment of of Greg Norman at the Awful. Open and, and at St. Andrews is not only laughable, I think it's disgusting. They treat him like he's some kind of pedophile or murderer. Like, yeah, like the awful. guy has literally uh, taken hostages. I mean, it just makes no sense to me. How do you treat Greg Norman that way in what he's accomplished in golf? You can say whatever you want about him not winning the Masters and everything else. But Greg Norman is, to me, a titan in golf. 
And they treat him now like he's a murderer. They certainly do. Awful what they did to him this week. He is as much a part of the history, the 150th anniversary, the history of that That's great right. tournament as any of these other guys. Norman should be there for all the nonsense they said he'd that be they've a been doing there the last two days. Well, look, you know what? This has been a major distraction, but he still should have been there. It's uh, a distraction found a way to work every minute it. of every day, Mike. They talk about it all uh, yes. day, every day. They don't talk golf anymore. They don't talk no. about St. Andrews. They don't talk about the Open. All they talk about is the Live Tour every day. They are doing this themselves. The, the Tiger Woods, Rory, it never ends. Justin Thomas, it goes on and on. Speak. They all do the same thing every day. They keep talking about the Live Tour. If they were smart, which they aren't, they just wouldn't talk about them at all. Like they don't even exist. But they just keep giving them attention. You can't even deny it. Nope, you cannot. And that's why tomorrow, when we hear from all the golfers, there will be no live clips on Coast to Coast. Strictly open at St. Andrews clips. And we will start that with Rory Scotty. He is the betting favorite at St. Andrews going into this weekend. He has been pretty good in the majors this year, but just not good enough to take home the title. Rory has one open title to his name. Will he have a second by the end of the week? Here he is. You know, I've only played one open here before. Uh, you know, I got off to a great start and um, got caught out in wind, not too dissimilar to what's out there today. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm playing well. I'm in good form. Um, you know, my confidence in my games is high as it's been in quite a while, so... I mean, I can't go in here thinking that this might be my time. I just have to go out and play a really good tournament. You know, I got to string four good rounds together, and, and, and hopefully at the end of the week that's, that's, um, that's good enough to, to win. But um, I'm happy where everything's at, and I just can't get ahead of myself and just have to make sure that I prepare well the next couple of days and, and get myself in the, in the right frame of, frame of mind for, for Thursday. It's the first time I have heard him talk last month where he hasn't uh, bashed live golf. It's the first yes. time I ever heard him just talk about his golf game. Uh, it's a miracle. It is a miracle. And he is right about one thing. He's been playing some pretty good golf uh, coming into this week over the last couple of months. We'll see uh, if he can find himself another major championship. Look at the tee time, Scotty, for Thursday. The heavy hitters and when they are going to be taking off, of course, Early in the morning, you saw uh, earlier on with Dubsy who you're going to have out there, Xander Schauffele and Rory, one of the first groups out at about 5 a.m. Eastern time. Tiger goes out later in the day. He's playing with Max Homa. Spieth, one of the last groups out. We love 5 a.m., 4 a.m., 3 a.m. tee-offs uh, here on the East Coast, Scotty. Yeah, look, uh, I think that, that 5 a.m. with Morikawa, Rory, and, and Xander is going to be incredible. The Willie Z group, uh, Scheffler, Joaquin Neiman, and my guy, Terrell Hatton, I think is going to be fantastic at just before 8.30. Uh, everyone will be watching Tiger Woods. Uh, Tiger Woods is not winning the Open Championship. I'll keel over if that guy wins with his one leg. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm just not buying it. He's not the same golfer. And everyone just constantly turns everything into him. And I love him, too, just like you do. I've loved watching his whole career, but I think those days are over. Uh, those days are over. The only bet uh, worth making, and we'll discuss tomorrow, is the Tiger to make the cut bet, which he did do at the Masters and the PGA Championship. Didn't go well for him after he made the cut in either of those tournaments. But we'll see if we can make some more money on him. He did quit at uh, Southern Hills. He did quit. Yes. <laughs> Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They played last game. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less. Rogers and the, the morning Russell after. Wilson. 
we saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy it, Sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell and coast to ABG, coast. That's where they win cups. They win Stanley Cups over there. Give me the Game penalty. time decisions. Kind of bizarre when you consider it. Like, so everybody is out for the Warriors. In game, live, I all like access. Vandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game, oh, live, man. prime oh, time. The PGA champion. In yes. game, live, overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The Pat McAfee Show. Anyway, Pat, have you ever devoured hot dogs like that ever? No. Like, have, you, have you thought about it? Could you could you enter that challenge? No. So I'm a good chugger, like a liquid chugger. I can make things disappear, like uh, Badlands. I think I could get Badlands uh, a gallon of lemonade at some point. The eating thing, I can't though, Shams. You love lunch. We all know that. Yeah. Have you ever attempted no, I'm not, the? Uh... I'm, not, I'm not. I got I got one or two hot dogs in me. I don't think I can devour them like 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 Joey Chestnut. I'm sorry. The Sports Grid Network. The morning after. So, Connor, you see the odds. How do you blend the future and all the changes we will see in the coming years with what is actually going to happen in the present? I don't think it makes any difference. I think this; those are two totally separate deals. I, I don't think USC's 2022 outlook is dependent on what happens, you know, with their future move to the Big Ten. I think it's dependent on whether or not Caleb Williams is actually going to be good against a defense who can actually who can actually play football. The Sports Grid Network. The Bostonian versus the book. Close, you can get some California programming. Get ready for one of the most expensive campaign races we've ever seen on your TV sets. Have you watched a Giants or yes. a Padres game? Yes, and the ads are absolutely insufferable. Vicious, I would say. Just, I mean, they're going at jugulars. Like, they're doing some real nasty, nasty <laughs> stuff to each other. The Bostonian versus the book. Pharrell, coast to coast. To roll with a guy like Xander Shabby that's as hot as he is. I think that you have to have a small piece of him in some aspect because history says at this tournament that guys that come in playing very well, whether it's a win in, in the five or six weeks coming in or a bunch of top tens in the five or six weeks coming in, they usually perform very well. Right. Uh, I think that you have to have a small piece. The Sports Grid Network. All right, Pharrell, back on uh, Coast to Coast. Always our uh, favorite to get on uh, Coast to Coast, Dave Sherapan, the sportsbook consigliere out in uh, Sin City, and he's just absolutely styling today in the sleeveless Bucko Road jersey. I have that same jersey, and it is just, frankly, exotic. Uh, let's bring him in. Uh, there he is. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at this guy. Oh, oh, oh are you serious? Hey, so you. let's start by taking uh, us on your trip uh, to the Berg. Like I saw you doing something uh, for MLB Network or something like that on the field. Mm -hmm. Saw you standing over there at PNC at first base, and I was jealous. It took only a matter of seconds before I was trying to figure out how the hell you pulled that off. <laughs> you know how things work, Scotty. When you are, you know, you know a couple guys and you do a couple things. They said, hey, we're going to shoot this stuff on the field, and all I needed to do was to make the rain hold off. So thank goodness the rain held off long enough for us to get down on the field. They walked us in, got in the dugout, took a couple pictures, went out on the field. Grounds crew guy said, listen, don't step on the mound. Just walk around it. So I went over to third, shot a little video there. Um, it was awesome, man. I forget how much fun it is to go to a baseball game. I don't know about you. I love going to games. I mean, I love going to any games. But I got to tell you, when you get away from PNC Park, when you get to go back, it's awesome. And Pirates beat them the first day, got crushed the second day, lost 16-0, had one of those games you just can't control. But 
it was great, man. It was it was fun. I saw a lot of people that we hadn't seen for a while. Every time you go back now, the more we're out there doing our thing, still representing Pittsburgh, even though we don't live there. When you go back, everybody can't wait to see you, take you to breakfast, pick you up at the airport. I love it. I got the I got the Scotty Farrell treatment. I did. It was great. Well, I actually, you know, uh, I go there all the time uh, to Steeler games. I have season tickets, so I go and I stay on the north side, right? And I stay right by uh, the stadium and both stadiums. And it's uh, really cool because, like, I'm going there for football games, but I'm always walking by uh, the ballpark, and uh, it's on the way to the hotel or whatever. And there's a great steakhouse over there, the Hyde Park Steakhouse, that's right by the ballpark. And I'm friends with the Mater D there. And uh, it, it just, I've been to PNC a million times for games and uh, I love it. I've been there, you know, my father was an institution at the ballpark. He was a season ticket holder for 60 years uh, at Three Rivers and at, at PNC. All the uh, concession uh, guys, the beer guys, they all knew him yeah. by name. Uh, he was a great storyteller. Where were no the one seats, the Scotty? Where were the seats? Well, he had, you know, he had different seats, different years. And, and over the years, uh, there was, I got to tell you, and I'm not even blowing smoke, like there was no baseball fan I ever met in my life that had more stories than my father. Uh, my dad was at game seven of the 1960 World Series at Forbes oh. Field when Mazeroski hit the home run. Um, he was friends with Mazeroski. I have a picture signed by Bill here in the studio right next to my face. Uh you know, my father has been to more pirate games than any human being on earth. And that includes people that work for the pirates. When I was a kid, I went to more pirate games than any kid you ever met in your life. Because we had season tickets. I went to every single game. I went to 80 games a summer. And I sat out there. He used to buy me beer. Uh, I would sit there. And at, at one point, I went through a phase of uh i was dipping red man shaw and i would have my mouth filled with tobacco and i'd just be spitting all over the floor just giant chunks of shaw and red man chewing tobacco and i'd wrap bubble gum in it like the players used to do right but look right. Uh, i so what was it like being there to see uh the two grand slams i think it was hicks and and yeah. uh the judge man yeah. uh, all rise what was it like going to that 16 nothing lobotomy? Well, first, the first game was Bill Mazeroski bobblehead night, and they gave away uh, dolls because it was Yankees uh, Pirates, and they brought Maz back, and he's he's regaled in Pittsburgh. I mean, it was awesome. Regale. And the and the Pirates won 5-2. So the hype was real. Now, I stayed where you stayed, I guess, at that place right across the street from the ballpark, right across from the Hyde Steakhouse. So right. that's where we were at. That's the first time I ever stayed over there. So we just walked around during the day. I walked around and took pictures with the statues and all that stuff. You get to do as a fan when you're not there living there. Because, you know, when you live there, you don't do that stuff. You just go to the game right. and you leave. Right. So, you know, the next day we had the rain delay and all that stuff. And then, I mean, it just got out of hand quick. Keller pitched great the first four innings. It was tied 0-0. Zero, zero. It, you know, it was a, looked like it was going to be an under game. In game got down to four and a half. I said, oh, this is definitely got to go over now. So Yankees opened it up, and then in that ninth inning, they put the position player in the pitch, and Man. it was all Yankee fans. I mean, it was all Yankee fans walking around during the day. They were a little subdued. I heard a lot of, boy, you guys got lucky during the day on Wednesday. and then. I mean, Tell I happen me to be right there where they got off the bus, Scotty. The Yankees got off the bus right in front of me. I was five feet away from those. It looks like an offensive line. I mean, Stanton, Judge, even Donaldson's big, strong dude. Like, they just kept getting off the bus. And I turned to my buddy that I was with. I said, do you believe how big these guys are? They put all the muscle to it on, on Wednesday. Scored 16 runs, two grand slams. Everything that could have possibly gone bad did. And then the Pirates go and, you know, go on the road, split with the Reds, two out of three against the, the Brewers, and win last night at Miami. So, I don't know, man. That, yeah, I that, bet that on him. Cruise, Scott, is, is tremendous to see in person. Yeah, I mean, I bet on him uh, last night, and it was Me a too. nice uh, win in 
in Miami. I, I love watching Cruz play. Uh, I know they're not that good, but they are exciting. They got a lot of boppers, uh, guys that hit home runs. They play their ass off. I, I appreciate them. I, I got to tell you, the Steeler story is really sickening to me. I think it's a huge oh. mistake. I, I don't what? care who they're getting their money from. You cannot sell this to Steeler fans or the city of Pittsburgh or to anyone that goes to Heinz Field that they've changed the name of it to some insurance company from Grand Rapids, Michigan. What in the Sam hell were they thinking and doing? This is a Do terrible you know even decision how to say by the it Steelers. Right? Do you know how to say it right? Accra-sure. Accra sure okay. Yeah. I'm still, are you going to say that? I'm not going to say it. I don't want to I'm not going to say it ever. <laughs> Thank you. Me neither. That's it. We're not doing it. I'm not doing it. There's no way. It's lame. I just can't believe it. I mean, like, and, and you know from growing up there, and I, as as do I, there's such a connection between the teams, the vibe, the city, this and that. I mean, Ben ain't even playing no more, and there's this quote right there. You know, it's just, it's just something that I think somebody at some point should have said, listen, it's not about the money here. Like, people aren't going right. to say it. Everything has a nickname, too, like stadiums, buildings. You always used to say, you know, right. we're going to here, we're going to – what are they going to call this? The sure? Are we going to go to the sure for the Steeler game? What the hell are we going to say? I mean, it is just – they have ruined the whole thing. They've ruined it. I mean, they have absolutely ruined – the ketchup bottle and Heinz Field. They have absolutely destroyed. It's, they might as well burn it to the ground. <laughs> it's all over the stadium there. I went before I went to the airport on Thursday and took a picture under the Heinz Field sign to say, I saw oh, that. I can't wait for Steelers season. And it's now going to be an antique. Like that's going to be something that's going to be gone. It just, it doesn't, I mean, I, listen, everybody, as you get older, sometimes people embrace change. Sometimes people fight it. I'm okay with change when it's change for the good, but change just to change or change for the bag, the bag ain't big enough to call it Acrisure Stadium. I have, uh, I have to tell you, the my season tickets to the Steelers, um, they mean more to me than my family. <laughs> I believe it. It's a pickup. I mean, even the kids. Even the kids. I mean. <laughs> I got to tell you, like, anybody asks with me with those tickets, I mean, that, they are literally gold. I mean, it's a 30-year waiting list. I got season you tickets. You can't give them up. You can't I give will, them up. I would give up my wife and children before I'd give up those tickets. Honestly, like, I, you have no idea. I spend more money than uh, anyone on earth going to Steeler games. I fly to the games every week. I stay in hotels. I eat at the Hyde Park. I eat at, uh, you know, Eddie V's. I eat at your Pamela's. I eat at every expensive restaurant in Pittsburgh. I behave poorly. We drink. We do felony narcotics. Everybody is just an absolute mess. I go to the games. I sit in rain, snow, sleet, ice, Heat, You're not covered? Sun. You're not even covered where you sit? I am 10 rows from the field in the oh, end zone, the closed end, where all the action is, and I love it. And I, I'm friends with all the people in my section, and they have seen us behave abhorrently. I mean, just absolutely abhorrent behavior. And they know we're completely gassed and behaving and, and just not even – we're not even in the right state of mind at these games. And they still put up with us, and they know who I am. I mean, I've been on the air in Pittsburgh for 30 years, and they know right. Pharrell's behaving poorly in the end zone again. And my friends that I bring are all felons and thugs and bank robbers and drug dealers. It's awesome. More with Dave Sherapan coming up. We're going to talk to him about everything going on in Vegas with the Summer League and all the action at the sports book. My favorite place, and his too. racing the clock's running out it all comes down to this we're talking pre-game 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 
Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best slips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Gam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or TuneIn, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. The Pat McAfee Show. Kevin Durant made a decision that only, you know, he can make in terms of going to the Nets and requesting a trade out of Brooklyn. And uh, from everything I'm told, uh, that stance has not changed. He, there's been no signal that he's going to back off of that. If anything, that stance is expected to continue. And the Phoenix Suns, uh, from everything I've been told, are his number one preferred destination. That's a great I think thing. there's, a, there's right. a desire to go play with Devin Booker, to go play with Chris Paul. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. The Utah Jazz here quickly. Look, uh, my read on Donovan Mitchell not requesting out slash Utah saying, we are going to stick with Donovan and rebuild around Donovan is more that they're not trading Donovan Mitchell until a Kevin Durant deal gets done. Because KD gets traded, and then all of a sudden the Miami Heat pivot and say, okay, here's our best offer, everything on the table. Only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. Well, you know, Kirsch has only made 11 starts and a 2.4 year array, 1.01 whip. He's certainly an all star. I mean, uh, who, who would you take over of you if you didn't want to go with Clay? Uh, Gonson's probably the player that no one talks about enough. I know some people argue that he should start the all star game over Alcatraz because it's in LA. I mean, that's the only reason you'd be starting him because it's in LA. Other than that, I mean, by the way, if you're going to start somebody in LA, wouldn't it be Kershaw? Not so much Gonson anyway. The Sports Grid Network. Uh, the stories over the years listening to me on the radio of my father going to uh, pirate games. He was the craziest SOB you ever met in your life. He never missed a game ever. Like he went to every game, every summer, every night, no matter what, hail, snow, rain, sleet, tornadoes. He went to Three Rivers and to PNC. I have 5 million pictures of me at baseball games with my father. And I will say this live on the air. I don't even care if that fat old bag is listening. Uh, the day she got him to stop going to PNC to Pirate Games was the day he died. Uh, my dad stopped going when he was about 81 years old to the games, and he was vibrant as hell. Carver High knew him. They all knew him. He was cool as hell. And the day he stopped going to Pirate Games was the day his problems began, and then less than three years later, he was dead. So thanks a lot, you fat bag. You killed my dad, you miserable bee. I hate you forever. Dad, I hate you. He should still be going to pirate games to this day. Dave Sherapan is our guest, the sportsbook and <laughs> Sigliere out in Las Vegas. I have to tell you, uh, let's go. You not, there you go. If you uh, have not gone to a summer league game yet with all those fans in Vegas, how about them packing them in to watch the NBA in Sin City? You can't even get a seat. I can't believe it. I haven't gone to a game yet. I went down uh, on Sunday to go, and it was jam-packed. In the last game of the night is when it really was – I didn't realize it was going to be as packed as it was, so I didn't go in. But somebody's in town. They said, hey, why don't you come down? We'll go to a game. So maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow night. I'm not sure yet. 
it's crazy, Scotty. I can't believe how much action there is betting wise on this stuff. Like the numbers are actually pretty sharp. The totals have been pretty good, but there's a lot of movement. There's a lot of people, uh, uh, you know, in and around the books that are actually betting this. So like it was always an afterthought, at least in the books in Vegas. We put it up because we had to. No first halves, just put up sides and totals, take dimes on the sides, nickels on the totals, get it done, get it over with in a week and a half. Now it's actually a legitimate thing. I mean, there's odds on teams to win it all, to win the summer league. I never in my life would have thought I would have seen that. That's out. There's uh, some books are putting up props. like So it's actually a realistic uh, money-making opportunity for both the betters and the books. Totally surprising to me. But there is definitely a buzz down on the strip, down by the Thomas and Mac, and there's people in town and around that not normally wouldn't be here in the second week of July. So that's always good for Vegas, too. Well, I remember. So I used to do the uh, shark show when I lived in Vegas uh, oh. back in the day. I used to do uh, Jerry's show. So I was always friends with uh, Shark. And I, I just, you know, it was a, an event. Like going to UNLV games when he was the coach was it was this it was the shack. Oh. I mean, to tell you, it was the deal. It was the biggest ticket in town in Las Vegas forever. And it's changed so much, but he's gone, unfortunately. But I gotta tell you, uh, I cannot believe what I'm seeing at the Thomas and Mac. Is it just at the Thomas and Mac that they have the games or do they play it anywhere else as well since they have so many games? It's at the Thomas and Mac and then at the Cox Arena next to it. So it's right. like an A side and a B side. So you wanna be in the A side with all the people because in the B side, it's a tight- The Cox one is smaller. Yes, the Cox one would be, I mean, I don't know if the ballers would fill the Cox arena, the way you guys are running the ships and all that stuff. You might right. actually do it, but that's a smaller arena, little band box, probably a little more physical game over there. The Thomas and Mac is, I mean, that's a big building and there's a lot of seats in there. So, so we were um, down four, we were down 15 last night at the half, uh, sports book can see the air. Uh, we were down 15 at the half in the summer league opener. Uh, what if you were betting in game, would you have taken the ballers to win? And how much do you think if we did win, we won by? So this is the post championship and it's ship, not chip. You came on the show. You said sh chip. It's not chip. It's ship with an S. But anyhow, would have made you dogs after the celebration, the first game back for the champs. Usually I would have probably had you as a short favorite. You tell me the other team can play. You're down 15. I just said there's, there's probably, I mean, you'd have been a big dog to win the game. I don't know how your knee was doing. I don't know how your shoulder was doing. I got to get an injury report if I'm actually making a line down 15. I don't know. You're probably plus three for the game. Don't tell me you won the game. We won the game by 14, so almost a 30-point swing. Did they even score in the second half? What the hell happened? Not much. Uh, <laughs> we decided it would be bang ball time, and we banged it into the big, and he had 30. The other one had 18, and we won by 14, so we call that the cover. All right, so uh, let me ask you, uh, when you're in Vegas now and all these famous people are there for the summer league, Yep. I, there's everybody and their brother, LeBron, yep. Melo, all the big stars, Trey, every big name in the NBA is in town. Are you seeing them out and about or are they underground? They're underground. Right now, everybody's underground. I've only been down at the corner where we were for the draft, down by the MGM Grand, and then over at New York, New York. That's the only two places I've been since I, you know, the summer league's been here. We might venture out and we maybe go back downtown a little bit, but those people aren't downtown. I don't know where they're at. I know they're at the games. And I think as teams get eliminated or there's less games as the week goes on here, I have a feeling like this weekend we may see some people out and about. There's some big concerts in town. There's some right. big shows, some, some comedians and stuff that I think people may gravitate towards. So fully expecting – to have to say to somebody, hey, do you know Scotty Farrell? Can you take a picture with me for him, please? I'm going to use your see name that. to get close and see who I could do it with. 
You would think it was like we showed pictures of Haro today with Jack Nicholas and Gary Player trying to show us up. That's what he was doing. So uh, it's a buck thirteen in the shade in Vegas in the summer. Hot as What's hell. that like for you, being a, a Pittsburgh kid, to deal with that microwave oven? So I'm used to it now because I, when I went to Curacao from Pittsburgh and I went back, I moved to Phoenix, Arizona first, and I lived in Scottsdale. Brutal. That Brutal. place is the hottest place in the United States in the summer. Four months, 118. I brought out my convertible from <laughs> Pittsburgh. I was sitting at a red light, and I thought my right ear was melting off of my face the first <laughs> summer I was there. So then I moved to Vegas, which is a little cooler than Phoenix, but it's hot as hell, Scotty. So what becomes winter back east becomes summer here. Everybody stays in a house. You run into your car. You start it early to cool it off so you could touch the wheel and actually put right. it in the gear. And then you drive right. to wherever you're going, put up the sun shields, and come back home. Everybody stays inside except for the softball team. We got practice tonight at 7 o'clock. It's going to be 108 when we start practice. It's cooling off to like 100 at midnight. The low today is going to be 86 degrees i came back to pittsburgh and it was 68 degrees i was freezing for two freezing. days i was like oh i thought i forgot what this was like but the humidity back home not gonna lie i'll take the dry heat in this suffering for two months because june july really really hot august the same maybe so it's three months of intense oh, heat bad. but then after that i got pretty much eight months of pretty good two months of eh you know, a little cool, 35 degrees, but no real snow, no issues. It's great. It's hot as hell right now. I ain't going to lie. It's hot. Carver High and I used to go out there in August uh, oh. for like a fantasy football draft that they would oh. have at the D uh, downtown. Yeah. And then yeah. Carver High and I could only hang at the pool for 45 minutes uh, in the morning because – uh, once it went past lunchtime, I mean, you can't, you just cannot sit out in it. It'll, mm -mm. Uh, it'll make you crazy. Uh, you'll lose your mind. So let me ask you this. Do you ever golf at uh, night in Vegas? Have you ever played night golf in the lights? I used to do that in Vegas all the time, play on the lit golf courses late at night. Yes. It's awesome. And they got a bunch of them. They do. I actually have done that multiple times of taking the kids. It's fun because there's bunnies running all around. The only problem with that, Scott, is you get older, you hit that ball up. Playboy bunnies. You, know, they're all, you can't see the ball once it goes over the light. So you know yeah. you hit a good shot, but if it don't come down anywhere close to where you were looking, you go through a sleeve of balls every couple holes. You need more balls because you can't find them. Yeah. So it's fun to do. Um but as I get older, I'd rather just either watch games or, you know, hang that out. That was like uh, that was like Christian Arroyo in right field on uh, Friday night with that <laughs> pop up against the Yankees. Did you like <laughs> Did you like that one? So what do you, you do in that situation? Who are you betting on uh, for the home run derby on Monday? Who do you like? There's a lot of big names now involved. I know. I saw that, actually. Um, Alonzo will be the odds on favorite, um, rightly so. And um, I don't think at that number that he's going to be, it's going to be low. I know if you made the numbers, it'd probably be like two to one, something like that. I think Schwarber's going to be live uh, depending on, you know, when he goes. I think he can win a round. I don't know if he can do it three times, which is what you have to do to win this thing. I like Acuna. I've already, I, I've looked at him. I think he can mimic that swing multiple times and he's going to be a, a higher payout. This is just like betting the three-point shootout in the NBA. Don't take much to go bet Steph Curry. Find me the guy that's going to be against him in the finals. And, you know, that's the that's the who to bet on. So, I don't know. Not Alonzo, but somebody else. Who do you think uh, wins that National League East after you saw Scherzer beat uh, the Braves last night and Max Fried? Who do you think takes it in the second half? I was on the Braves before the season. And I'm going to stick to it and say the Braves do it still. But what I saw from Scherzer last night, it's not going to be because of him. I mean, or you know, the, the Mets aren't going to lose it because of Scherzer. Scherzer got this time off. He looks as fresh as could be. Last year when he went to the Dodgers, he got that dead arm late in the season. I don't think it'll be his issue. Um, DeGrom coming back and coming back like DeGrom, that obviously is going to make the Mets 
pretty solid down the stretch, avoid those losing streaks. I still think the Braves are going to win it, but I think the Mets and the Phillies are both going to make the playoffs. I think they're both going to be wild cards. So are you betting tons of baseball right now uh, going into the break? Are you betting a lot every day, money lines, run lines, first five innings? What are you doing? I did a ton of bets yesterday in-game. While I was on with Gabe and Cam, we were talking these things through, and you can see it. The numbers are starting a little too high. So when the game goes to post, and then you get that first inning, hopefully you get the top of the inning at zero, they're jumping the run down. So alternatively, when they score a run in the first inning, they're jumping the run up. So you get a game that closes seven or seven and a half, and you get a first inning run, and it goes to eight and a half right away. If you liked it at seven and a half, you love it at eight and a half. And I was doing that last night, and the numbers are getting tight. Three games, I won by a half a run with the totals. So... Um, that's what I'm doing right now. Picking the sides is really tough. All-star break week. You got to be careful because some guys have already, yeah, a lot of people, uh, going back lastly to the Steelers, a lot of people thought they should have, I saw it today. They should have named it after you. Like, uh, I heard some, you know, sports book consigliere stadium, stuff like that. I'm a little surprised. Well, we could go down with that. The S C S where are we going to yeah. the game? We're going to the S C S. It sounds idea. good to me. Uh, Dave, love you. Always love having you on Coast to Coast, brother. Stay cool in Vegas. Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. They played last game. The early line. Take a look at the top four seats here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less. Rogers and the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell, coast the to BBG, coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game penguins. time decisions. Kind of bizarre when you consider it. Like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live all like access. Mandy. I like Mandy against Bam. I think Mandy can win the game, take a four and a half. In game oh, live man. prime oh, time. Major, the PGA champion. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The morning after. What do you make of the changing landscape of college sports? College sports is changing at a rate that I think a lot of people are really uncomfortable with. So everybody's trying to figure out what's next, right? But what's now, in my opinion, is really, really interesting because the SEC made this move a year ago and the Big Ten finally answered. And now you're like, all right, finally, it isn't just going to be the SEC versus everyone else. It's going to be the SEC in the Big Ten versus everyone else. The Sports Grid Network. The Pat McAfee Show. I was joking with uh, with a couple of my buddies um, on the squad, and I said, could be a long training camp for the offense. I like the way our defense is, is looking and playing, and, and just on paper, it, it looks like they're going to be pretty formidable. So it could be could be some growing pains for the offense, which would be great for us. It would be nice to, uh, to take our lumps uh, from time to time. The Sports Grid Network. Sports professor Rick Haro inside the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your daily numbers game. NBC reconfiguring its television product. They shut down their regional sports networks last year, and they're offering a direct-to-consumer service. Now, the Olympic Channel, which opened a number of years ago with 35 million homes, key to Olympic programming that you can get only on that particular channel, is now shuttering. But they did say before the fall is over, they will announce a new Olympic strategy. And of course they will, and it will involve streaming. NBC is the most prolific investor in the history of the Olympic movement. And since the games will return to a more reasonable, for the United States anyway, time zone for advertisers with Paris and then L.A., they have to get their act straight relative to streaming. This will be the first step. Sports professor Rick Haro, the first game.
All right, fast forward, Pharrell on your face with the Pharrell of finish. Adrian Broner is going to fight Omar Figueroa on August 20th. Five-star edge rusher Jaden Wayne commits to Miami. Kane day, Kane day, Kane day. Over Bama, Georgia, and LSU. The WAC is altering their basketball tournament format by introducing a bold new seating concept based on advanced analytics, not ratings and records. Wayne Rooney will be the new manager of D.C. United. 5,000 pounds of meth seized in San Diego when a truck is followed after a crossing board. Uh, you know, they followed the truck and it was filled with meth. Celebrity fashion designer arrested for allegedly smuggling crocodile handbags into the United States. Some old lady stealing crocodile bags. I love it. NFL free agent offensive tackle Dwayne Brown arrested at LAX on gun charges. Another idiot bringing the gun to the airport. California woman caught on video setting a man on fire in a park. She walked right up to some guy laying around in the park and poured lighter fluid on him and set him on fire. That kick ass. Where do I find this stuff? Murder suspect said that it felt good after bludgeoning the neighbor to death with a bat. It felt good doing it, the guy said. Mother and boyfriend arrested after a seven-year-old girl falls out of a moving SUV and was fatally struck on a California freeway. Whoops, where did our daughter go? Right out the door and splattered on the freeway. All over Manhattan should do bad. Starbucks quietly yanked the new chicken sandwich carver high since it gave everyone diarrhea. <laughs> Nothing like going down to get your frappuccino and having a little bite of chicken sandwich and getting real by the time you get back to the hotel. And then you spend three days on the kisser working it out. It took the sandwich off the shelves in the Starbucks. Drinking alone when you're younger is linked to alcoholism in their 30s. What isn't linked to alcoholism? See you tomorrow at Coast to Coast. GTD is next. Good night, everybody. Bye.